An air of mystery has always surrounded Nevada's Area 51 base. For years, the U.S. military denied that it even existed, but it's been there since 1955, hidden behind cryptic nicknames. Now, new secrets about the base being made public, including, for the first time, its real name. George Knapp of the 8 News Now I team has the story. Area 51 is in one sense a living, breathing contradiction that is the world's best known secret base. It's inspired books, TV shows, even major motion pictures. Welcome to Area 51. But was it ever truly a secret? Area 51 was never secret, you know, the existence of it. It's just who was out there and what they were doing. Longtime CIA technician T.D. Barnes has probably done more than anyone to lift the veil of secrecy from Area 51. He's the head of the Roadrunners, a group of former Area 51 employees who came out into the open more than a decade ago to talk about the work they did in the Nevada desert. Barnes took things much further, nudging the CIA to declassify photos and documents about the base, things even the CIA didn't seem to know, including the base's real name. Station D was the CIA's original name for Area 51. It's right there in the title of Barnes' new definitive history of the place. They had all kinds of documents in there that identified as Station D. Wow. And it just has avoided that the public has, hasn't seen that until right They've now. They've never seen it. And the uh, and but it, even when I went back to historians get, get more, they said, we've never heard of that. <laughs> In his book, Barnes outlines the astonishing array of names, nicknames, and code names used for the base since it was first chosen by the CIA back in 1955 as the perfect spot to secretly test and fly the highly classified U-2 spy plane. Groom Lake is the location, so that's always been used. CIA employees initially called it Watertown or the Watertown Strip, named for the hometown of the CIA director at the time. The designation Area 51 started in 1958 when the CIA needed to annex land from the nearby atomic testing range in order to develop the A-12 Blackbird. Sometime in the 60s, the 51 disappeared from maps, and the military started pretending there wasn't a base out there at all, even though Russian spy planes knew it was there. Lockheed used the name Paradise Ranch, a cruel joke to lure workers out to the desert. It was anything but paradise. Paradise Ranch became just the ranch, then Red Square, or the box, which were referred to the no-fly zone around the base. Several other names popped up over the decades. Yuletide, St. Elsewhere, Home Plate, Homey Airport, and The Site, along with many other variations, including what might be the best of the bunch, Dreamland, taken from a tower call sign. The CIA used cover stories, basically lies, to disguise what went on at Groom Lake. In the beginning, it was supposedly a NASA weather station, then an atomic energy research facility. But the whole time, the CIA was developing the world's most advanced espionage platforms, technology that helped the U.S. win the Cold War. In the 70s, when CIA misdeeds caught the attention of Congress and two presidents, it suddenly dawned on Washington that the CIA was forbidden from operating inside the U.S. Station D was shut down and control transferred to the U.S. Air Force. In the mid-80s, when the Air Force seized 89,000 acres of public land around Groom Lake, public attention was aroused. At the end of the 80s, it exploded because of a certain wild story, the one that made the base world famous, which Barnes also covers in his new book. When the word got out that, that there's something going on Area 51, and that the CIA was involved for 20 years that no one knew about. I said, what were they doing for 20 years out there? And that's when the UFO thing started. UFOs, eh? At Area 51? Kind of rings a bell. Actually, nine uh, flying saucers. George Knapp, 8 News Now.